is the fight now for third and fourth. The red and gold car, that is Cuckoo Marlin. Two, the veteran from Columbia, Tennessee. Marlin started 31st on the grid today. But as a result of accidents and yellow lights, he's moved up steadily. Uh, the topic has turned to Sterling, and he does have his first win under his belt. Doggone it, he won uh, the Winston Open this year. It don't go in the record book, though. Oh, but it goes in the record book in hearts of his fans. Oh, yeah, that's true, too, of course. Uh, and he is. came within a hair of winning the Winston. That's right. He's running extra good over there. Last lap to decide it all. Sterling Marlin stays first. Ernie Irvin in second. Here they come, down the stretch for the final time. It is Sterling Marlin in the lead. Down to the inside comes the 28. Coming to the line. Sterling Marlin's going to win it. <laughs> I wonder what, Ster what would Sterling Marlin say, Steve? He'd say, uh, throw the stick in my spoke, back me up. But, you know, we just have to come back next week. My boys, I feel bad for the boys in the shop. They've done a good job. And I did a good Sterling Marlin one morning on the radio, and everybody kept going up to Sterling saying, you was good on radio this morning, and he thought, he finally just said, hey, damn, Michael. And uh, then he tried to wreck me when practice started, so I haven't done any Sterling since then. Well, uh, uh, well, we had a really good year. Uh, well, uh. Uh, I guess we all think, uh, well, <laughs> probably think Cruz Luck. Yeah, kept some beer all year. You know, guys are happy still. So. Are we live? Sterling, what a, what a good deal tonight. What happened there at the last six or eight laps? My buddy Jimmy Spencer pushed us by a bunch of cars. Had a good car all night. Cruz Light guys done a good job. Thank everybody at the shop. Chip Ganassi and Cruz Light. Whole deal, car drove good, and thank you. My favorite Sterling Marlinism is throw the stick in my spoke. Back me up. <laughs> if stick and spokes hurt. <laughs> Oh. Well, we're showing a replay of your hit. What's that? We're showing a replay of your hit there with the oh, bag of... Junior? Yeah, he came by, and I can't really tell you what he said, but he was just laughing, saying that was uh, that was a buddy hit, so no no harm. Actually, the hit on your teammate there. Oh, that was good, wasn't That it? was real good. Yeah, that was funny. Sterling's always playing jokes on me, so he'll get me back, I'm sure, one day, probably with a firecracker. You know, Michael got out of the call, come in running fourth, fifth, and uh, had a 13-second stop and got beat out of the pits for three cars. I see you bunch of damn cheaters. <laughs> I think. Oh, we got another wreck. <laughs> Sterling Marlin is jumping out of his car. He's going around to look at the right front fender. But, oh, he can't do that. Lee, they let him look at it, but they wouldn't let him pull it out because you know that's against the rules under red flag conditions. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Daryl just said it's Mule Day in Columbia. Are you actually missing that big festivity? I had, I had never seen it. <laughs> never seen it. I've always been racing. Oh, no. And uh, I never get to see it. They. They didn't do it for a lot of years. It started back like 74, 75, and always been racing, always miss it. But uh, what is the highlight of that event? I don't know. I guess it's a bunch of drunk asses. <laughs> <laughs> Driver of car number 17 he is from Columbia, Tennessee. Drives the Hesco exhaust Pontiac. That is Sterling or Sterling Martin. Which is it? Marlin, I should say. Which is it? Yeah, it's Marlin and it's Sterling. And the question is to G or not to G. <laughs> Sterling says that you don't pronounce the G. You don't put the G on the driver's uniform. But his mother, Eula Fay, says, hey, son, that's what's on your birth certificate. So I think we're going to have an opportunity to have a little fun with Sterling Martin's first name for the 1983 racing season. If there was a pre-race favorite for the Rookie of the Year Laurels this year, it probably would be Sterling. He's got a lot of experience at the Nashville racetrack in Nashville, Tennessee, a place that has graduated a number of press down the backstretch. Somebody's got to give going into turn number three, and it's Buddy Baker, although Bodine doesn't have a strong line. Sterling Marlin is the leader. Sterling Marlin is going to lead for the first time today. And Sterling Marlin takes advantage of the fact that Baker and Jeff Bodine were dicing for position back there. Bodine is the lap car. You heard us talk to him during the caution flag. He would like to get that lap back. The car is coming back toward him. But Sterling Marlin, who has never won a Winston Cup event, there is Sterling. Looks like, uh, you know, <laughs> you can see it. He uh, he definitely turned me around. And, uh, you know, it's unfortunate. The car is running real good, and the boys was was uh, had worked real hard on the car all week. Oh, Sterling Marlin spins off of corner number two. 
he's going down to try to have a word with yep. uh, Ricky Rudd. That's not very smart, Sterling. Sterling uh, is looking for Ricky to have a uh, word or two with him. But racing is racing, and... Well, when you get to the short tracks, Bob, yep. you never know what to expect. That's right. Sterling has gone inside of, of, of uh, Rudd's hauler. John, truly an amazing story that this man would even be at this racetrack this weekend. It was one week ago, Sunday afternoon, Bristol, Tennessee, lap 421. A piece of metal came out of the left exhaust pipe, cut the left rear tire, and the Maxwell House Ford began to spin, slam the outside wall in turn one, and burst into flames. The car backed down across the racetrack, and Sterling Marlin bailed out of the race car with first and second degree burns. Three days in intensive care, then transferred on Thursday this week to the Vanderbilt University Burn Center, where he's getting excellent care, and it's from there that he was flown to, Brist to Wilkesboro today to get in this race car. And Sterling, for all the fans across the country and us at ESPN, it's good to see you back, my friend, and uh, how are you feeling? I feel good, Jerry. Uh, it's good to be back, and, uh, you know, sitting up there in Bristol Monday, I just wonder if I can get back in the car this weekend. And uh, the burns are healing real good, and uh, I'll probably get released next Wednesday or Thursday, and... Uh, maybe I can run Martinsville. We'll just have to see how good they're healing. And, uh, things look good, so uh, we'll just hang on and see what we'll do. I'd like to thank everybody that sent cards and called. and uh, You wouldn't believe it. Uh, you know The race fans are great, and I just appreciate being here. A tremendous display of courage by this 33-year-old driver to run one lap today, climb out of the car, and he will leave immediately by ambulance back to Vanderbilt in Nashville, Tennessee, and hopefully to race many, many more Sunday afternoons. Look at Sterling Marlins, number 22, destroyed in the front end. Sterling Marlin still looking for his first Winston Cup win. That's Sterling Marlin, your second place finisher. One day, gentlemen, he's going to wind up in victory lane. Tell you what, he's going to win one soon, guys. And for second, it is Marlin just inches over Ken Schrader. He's had nine seconds, but don't be too hard on him for not winning. Another young fella had eight runner-up finishes before he got his first win, and then he won a bunch of them. Bill Elliott. <laughs> yeah, but it's been a longer time, it would seem, for for uh, Sterling Marlin. Earnhardt nipping away at him here. Perched in second place. Find a lurch out there. Launch one final assault out of turn four. Down they come, the short 1,600 foot straight away to the finish line. And the winner of the 1995 Daytona 500 is again Sterling Marlin. And now right there, they touch. Yep. And they touch again. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, and there's the line. <laughs> that last lap, it was all I could do, just keep Sterling behind me much. If he had passed me, they'd all pass me. And uh, it was a... Bump and run kind of thing. It was just using all the race car we could. But. Sterling Marlin would like to win that 10 grand. He comes up on Rusty Wallace very quickly on the inside. Now gets up on the outer groove, and I wouldn't doubt what Sterling Marlin can get the lead here. Look at this. Just drive under Rusty Wallace and Michael Waldron, and there goes Sterling Marlin. Wow! Uh, Dale Earnhardt, you're running fourth, but boy, the four car looks awfully stout. Yeah, he's sort of by himself, isn't he? Uh... They give him great pit stops, and, uh, you know, the team's pumped up and fired up, and I am too, so we're going to try to win this championship. Well, I have talked to you about this very thing before, and and we have both agreed that it's that it's part of the success of both the race team and the uh, improvement in Sterling Marlin as a driver because of the communication between you two. You get along so well. I tell you, we do, you know, uh... He's a super neat guy. Me and him gets along great, and, uh, you know, he's doing one heck of a job driving our race car this year. Of course, like our, we just got to have track position. You know, hopefully this will give us some track position, and uh, we'll see what the Columbian Comets got for him here in this shootout. Glove has to talk to Sterling because nobody else can understand him. That's why you got to have Glove to interpret what's going on. And look at Jeff Burton on the corner and just go wide and back in front. Go Sterling Marlin. What was that all about? Here comes Rusty Wallace. Well, so many things special about this day. Of course, it was an exciting race. Uh, my hat's off to uh, Sterling Marlin and Ricky Rudd. What a, what a great race. Watch in front of you there. Come on, come on, come on. Go back to the caution. Go back to the caution. It was like a champion. He laid back. He was smart. Yes, he did. Look, I could see nothing. All of a sudden, smoke clear. And there's that 20. Barely missed. That's a hell of a job, Sterling. Watch this. They get all crossed up here, banging on each other. The six and the forty, Sterling and Mark. A little thump. 
And here goes the nine. He gets the run. The crew working on the car. Your version of what happened out there, Sterling? I got run over a bug-eyed dummy, I guess. And you can take a junk car and run good here. I mean, it's it's nothing, nothing to it. Sterling Marlin, out of respect to Kenny Irwin, his teammate at Sapco Racing, did not qualify here on Friday. Sterling is in on a provisional starting spot. He just uh, stayed away from the racetrack for the rest of the day on Friday, as well you can understand. Well, it is. You know, our prayers and thoughts with Kenny's family, and uh, it was a tragic deal. I mean, I was probably the last one seeing going out the trailer and uh, getting a race car to go practice. So, uh, you know, we thought about it all weekend. And It is Bill Elliott who is out in front. He's led 54 of the 141 laps so far. But Sterling Marlin is closing quickly in second place. This guy, I'm telling you earlier, happy hour, he looked the best to me. And he, whenever they did that last stop, they had dialed this car in because he is eating Bill up right now about three-tenths of a second. Tony Glover's lobby and the NASCAR officials in his pit. And he's getting help from his driver on the radio. Sterling really giving a very detailed weather report. <laughs> you can imagine what he's telling them. Ricky Craven is right there. Closing in. Caution. Caution's coming out for rain. Caution down. This one's over. And Sterling Marlin has pulled it off. He and Tony Glover, Lee McCall, and an entire Dodge team. Big victory for Sterling Marlin, Coors Light, Chip Ganassi, and Dodge. And you know this will be a big celebration. <laughs> You know, Tony really does a great job. Andy Gray, Shield, Felix, all these guys on this team done a great job. And uh, how about you, Sterling? Lee Back McCall, in the crew chief. Love them all. Sterling Marlin will get his eighth consecutive top ten finish. His tenth Winston Cup career win and his second win of 2002. Marlin wins the Carolina Dodge Dealers 400. And you know, I'm really proud. I'm happy for Sterling to get the opportunity to show just how good a race car driver he is. Sterling is all, he has probably the most experience of anybody in the garage area right now. And he's been with a lot of teams, but this one is the right one for him, the right combination. They're doing all the right things. I mean, you're a tough old quarterback guy. Now, you have never missed anything for injury reasons. How is this going to affect you personally? Just disappointed. I mean, you, you want to be out there right now, and it's, it's boring as on the what's sitting here to me <laughs> right now. And it's really going to be boring you know, going to the races and, and not being to, to be the parts that you're normally being. But, uh, like I said, Lisa, get here and walk around, and I take this thing off whatever I want to, and, and uh, feel fine. I feel like get the car right now and go, but uh, just can't do it. You know the most telling thing of all the press conference that we attended yesterday morning with Sterling and Felix, it's the same vertebrae that Christopher Reeve broke, mm -hmm. and he's back here. So. Can't take a chance with him. No, I mean, you just can't take a chance. 26-year-old Jamie McMurray pulls off the victory in just his second NASCAR Winston Cup start. This is a tough opportunity or a really hard situation with Sterling getting hurt and everything, and he's been great to me. We're all sad that Sterling had, had his injury like that, and you hate to see somebody that has worked that hard and, and led the points for so long get knocked down of the series for the rest of the year. But, uh... Yeah, guys, this morning Scott told me I don't know what to expect. The setup in this car was really meant as a lot of dirt on the racetrack for David Stremming to drive it. He said it was a very conservative setup. It was not nearly as aggressive as a setup that he would like to have in the car. But he came on the radio a few laps ago and said, guys, we have a terrific car. Let's make Sterling proud and finish in the top five today. This team definitely racing with a heavy heart. Crew had given them a great ride. Uh, my heartfelt condolences go out to, uh, to Sterling and, and, and his dad and his whole family for, for, their, for their horrible loss. Sterling Marlin having a great run, although it's been running hot all day. He's very pleased with his competitors today who are all running a decal in memory of his late father, Cuckoo, who passed away last Sunday morning. And Sterling is having a good run. The veteran from Columbia, Tennessee, whose dad raced here when the track first opened. Look at Cuckoo's boy go! Great note on Sterling Marlin. He's led 1,004 laps in restrictor plate racing, but that is the first lap he's led on a plate race in the last 12 events. I remember Sterling once saying that, that Charlie Brown kicking the football and Lucy was always taking it away from him. Today he kicked the football. Ladies and gentlemen, in victory lane at the Daytona Speedway from Columbia, Tennessee, former Nashville Speedway track champion Sterling Marlin 
about to clamber out of car number four, and Mike Joy is waiting there with him. Second to Ernie Irvin in this race in 1991, second in the last two Pepsi 400s. And Sterling, <laughs> he's, he's more surrounded here than he was on the track. Here he comes. In 1992 at Talladega after the 500, I had to speak to you after finishing second for the eighth time in your career, and we agreed someday your day would come, and today it is. Well, I knew if I ever got with a you know good race team, and I tell you, these boys worked awful hard all winter, and uh, we come down here to win it, and I knew when I left house we was going to win the race, and uh, wasn't looking too good early, but uh, they done a heck of a job getting the car adjusted, and uh, man, I love them. Thank Kodak, Delco, Remy, everybody. I love them.